Stockton. Now, let's imagine I don't know anything about it. Okay. What makes Stockton so special as it relates to Filipino martial arts? Okay. Well, uh, Stockton, um, in the early 1900s, um, uh, many uh, Filipinos were recruited uh, to work in the farm and, uh, and it, uh, some uh, Hawaii and, and the San Joaquin Valley. And, uh, other other farming areas here in, in uh, over there in California, and so anyway, uh, so in Hawaii they work in in, uh, in the sugar cane and, and uh, pineapple, you know, and in, uh, here in California uh, they work in asparagus, tomatoes, you know, and uh, so uh, so you know a lot of them uh, at that time uh, were recruited from the remote areas of the Philippines, and many of them were uh, limited in their education. And uh, I mean, even if they, they had higher education, um, the choices were limited here. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, so uh, they would only hire Filipinos for uh, hard labor or uh, menial labor jobs. And so anyway, um, and uh, so uh, many people settled in Stockton because of the farming community. You know, so uh, you know, so all the, all the, you got all these warriors, man, that 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 uh, that are here, and uh, because all of them. In some form or another, they knew some kind of, of uh, you know, martial arts. Naturally, they brought their their martial arts. They kept it, and then, uh, and then, next thing you know, in the early '60s, you know, some of them started teaching. Angel Cabalas was uh, already teaching in 1962, you know, and then other accounts said he was he started in '65, and then officially opened a school in 1966. And uh, so, and then at that time, he welcomed uh, the other screamers at his club, and uh, and so uh, and it was it was the first time that uh, uh, the Filipino martial arts was taught outside the Filipino uh, community. Once he finished his class, then he would invite his uh, uh, his Filipino friends to come and teach. Uh, Leo Hiron, uh, Gilbertino, uh, it was uh, John Lacosta, you know. So all of these guys were all there together. And uh, they started sharing their martial arts. And and one of our local, uh, one of our uh, local uh, uh, martial artists uh, 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 started researching his uh, uh, Filipino heritage, Filipino martial arts. Uh, at that time, he was doing. Uh, uh, he was with Ed Parker at that time, and uh, Ed Parker told him, "Hey." You should research some of your Filipino martial arts, and uh, because I know he was doing JKD already with Bruce Lee, and uh, and that's uh, Guru Dan in Osanto. So he came to Stockton and started doing his research, and uh, and started studying there. And then uh, he wrote a book uh, back then on Filipino martial arts. And many of the Stockton screamers at that time that were openly teaching uh, was added to that book, and and so. That's really how uh, they got. That's how Stockton got famous for for his Filipino martial arts. Let's, let's recap some of these big names. Yes. Angel Cabales, Dan Inosanto. Uh -huh. Continue it for me. Oh, we have the, uh, Angel Cabales. Uh, the, the the these were the manongs, the, the instructors. Angel Cabales, Leo Hiron, uh, Gilbertino, and uh, uh, John Lacosta. They were the ones that were well known. According to yeah. your rec recollection or perhaps experience. Did these guys get along with one another? At that time, yes. Right? Yeah. And, and they time. must have shared. They must yeah, have they, influenced they, yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I think part of it had to do with, uh, with how successful uh, uh, they were in, uh, in, in, in uh, exposing the Filipino martial arts. Right. And, and, and you know, next thing you know, uh, there were many people coming in from, from out of town, wanting right. to learn it. Right. You know, and, uh, and then... Uh, uh, you know, then you know egos got in the way. Like yeah. you know, he, people think this guy's better, that guy's better, and right. uh, you know, and 
So it, it almost sounds like they were a victim of their own success. I, I maybe that's not far fetched at all. Right? Yeah, you know, yeah. like they, 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 they did something amazing, yeah. and it evolved into something that, I mean, that separated them. Right? I mean, there's yeah. just. There's no doubt there's politics in Filipino martial arts. There's yeah. no doubt that there's infighting yeah. and, yeah. There, you know, even brothers yeah. split apart for, you know, um, disagreements. Uh, what what What's the future of Filipino martial arts? Um, Will this bickering and fighting and politics continue and continue? Well, you know what? You know, there's always going to be that, you know, uh, the bickering and the fighting. Uh, right. it's, hard, it's hard to get away from that, you know, and uh, so uh, it's not just limited to Filipino martial arts. It's not, uh, you know, and uh, but you know what, man, uh, I'm hopeful about. I'm just an optimist, okay. I'm hopeful that uh, some of us, uh, the next generation of discriminators out of Stockton, uh, we're making an effort to unite. You know? Take it back to the and, way it used to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, and so you know, so you know, and and and, and so. Uh, we're, uh, what I'm saying is this, like for me, I can speak only for myself. I'm willing to work with anyone that will work with me. And I'm willing to put any any differences aside in order for the better men of the heart. Because it's not about it's not about us, man. You know, it's about the culture, it's about the Philippine martial arts, it's about the future. And, and, and the more we, we can get together and uh, be united, man, we, we, can, we can just be, be as big as anyone. Filipinos are naturally stubborn. Yeah, that's true. We're naturally prideful. Yeah. Yeah. How do we get over all the scars and the past pain? You know what, man? I just think it's just one person at a time, man. You know, I think that for all of us uh, instructors that are serious about uh, the future of the Filipino martial arts, you know, we need to be the leaders. So we need to teach our students that culture. You know, so in so. Uh, you know, it might not happen in my lifetime, but then I can I can pass that on to to the culture of my students that maybe one day they can make that happen. Do you think yeah. that Filipinos can learn something from other arts? Like, we, oh, I'm, absolutely. Is there a way that wrestling can be integrated? You know, the wrestling philosophy, the discipline, the hard work, or perhaps some some Taekwondo drills. Do you yeah. think there's room for the Filipino martial arts to begin embracing other arts and integrating? Maybe some training methodologies. Yeah. Well, you know what, man? It's not strange to Filipinos because that's what they've done. That's that's what okay. Yeah. FMA is meant to adapt yeah. and evolve. Absolutely, to... because you know, uh, you know, well, uh, the Philippines, uh, were, were, we had different Europeans there at right. one time or another, you know, mm -hmm. and then we had the Chinese and the Japanese, you know, and uh, so. Uh, yeah, Filipinos are good, like, oh, hey, that worked real nice there, that good, yeah. I borrowed that one, okay? <laughs> yeah. Ingenuity and, and, and adaptability yeah, yeah. is also and, and, a part of who we are. Yeah, obviously. sure, you know, so if you look at uh, the traditional art, you know, when it came from, uh, when it was uh, its sea lot roots, you know, and to where it is now, it's different, man, Right. you know? And where you look at uh, other parts of the of, of Malaysia, Indonesia, Borneo, where they're still more, they still more have of the traditional sea lot and kuntao, you know, it, it start, it, and the Filipino martial arts, man, it's just, it looks different, right. you know, and some are more sea lotish and others are, are more open, you know, and uh, so, yeah, man, we believe in expressing what we can learn. Right, I yeah. think, and it's funny because it seems innovative and new now to bring it back to the way it used to be. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's kind of, yeah. it's a strange and wonderful thing here. But uh, what what can you do? What can you do to ensure that that we take it back to the old school? <laughs> well, that we, that we bring it back to the spirit of sharing, yeah. and collaboration, and innovation. You, I, I, like, I, like I said, man, the instructors have to... to to, to uh, first be the leaders of that. They have to be the example uh, because everyone else will follow, you know. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, man, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, if, I want, if I want respect, I'll still respect first, you see. And You're uh, going to take the first step. Yeah, I'll take the first step. Wow. And, 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 and then so, and I think many of us are willing to do that, you know. I and, think uh, so. Yeah, so. Yeah, there's a lot more positive things than the negative that, that we can do. As a, as, a, as one unit, man.
sir. What can I say? Thank you very much for sharing all that knowledge. Thank you for sharing a bit of your, your history. And thank you for uh, helping uh, guide the future of Filipino martial arts. And oh, I, I, I think the future is bright as well. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you, sir. Thank you.